Well, we continue with our sports Monday sports chat show here, uh, and we have guests in studio. From uh, my far left is Sami Nyango, the competitions and training captain and National uh, Gun Owners Association of Kenya, and also Pauline Muni, who is the women women and youth representative at the National Gun Owners Association of Kenya. Welcome to the studio, and to begin with you, Sami. We, we have so many things that are happening in swimming, in, 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 in shooting as a sport right now. I'm sorry about swimming. Sh so shooting as a sport right now, we have had uh, so much growth and so much development. Like now we are, we are going to the second championship. Uh, there's Africa IDPA championship. We've seen the national teams and uh, individuals, uh, shooters, leave this country, go outside. What do you make of this growth in just a few years of handling and trying to train young people. Uh, thank you, Jeff, and good morning, everyone. Thanks for having us here again. Um, it's good that we see that the media is embracing and playing a big role in making sure that the country does do have a focused direction in, in what we are currently doing. And we are happy to be here as the National Gun Owners Association and as a shooting fraternity. Um, I would actually equate that growth to a lot of uh, stakeholder involvement and uh, coordination and collaboration between uh, the, the, shooting, um, the shooting family, as I may call it, and also equally a lot of involvement that has been brought in and appreciation from us to the government, where they've come in to show that um, what we have been doing and trying to create for some time now has been embraced positively, and also to the Kenyan public and the community, where they've also given us the support by we are trying to demystify and to remove the hardened story that people with firearms are either the, the rich or the people who are cowboys or the people who do misuse them. Mm -hmm. But it can actually be used for sports within contrived, controlled confinement and it is a good, a good sport that can grow positively. So the growth has been through a lot of hard work which has been put from the federations, from the, the groups of friends that we have and from a lot of collaborations and coordination. It has a, its own challenges, but with those challenges has also created a lot of a good platform for growth. That's very great. So let me talk to Pauline here. Pauline, if, if you look at what is happening right now, uh, in so many sports, women are always left behind. But as a woman representative, as a youth representative in that National Against Association of Kenya, what is your role and how do you ensure that women also are included, the youth also are included in this massively, not just a few individuals? Thank you very much, Jeff. Um, now, I would say that having come on board in the shooting uh, sport mm -hmm. way back in 2008, what I found very interesting is that uh, we had very few ladies the larger chunk being the discipline forces and the discipline services. And uh, the, the smaller number was the civilian fraternity. So over time, I would say that there has been a very steadfast growth with women coming on board on the spot. However, I realized that uh, having to come on board on a leadership position, that enabled me to be able to tailor some programs which would be able to rope in women, rope in the youth, demystify the sport, make it more attractive and also make the women comfortable in knowing that they can consider shooting as a second sport or an extra sport that uh, they would be able to, to, to actually just hop into it and even excel in it. Um, we've had uh, tailor-made uh, shoots for women, like the one that was previously um, which took place last year at, uh, in Samburu Shaba. Yeah. We've had another one in Gong, where we had dropped in ladies from uh, the discipline services. We also had uh, civilians from various corporates who did not even have prior uh, exposure to the sport, but had a stint with it where they were trained under very structured and uh, well-tailored uh, safety environments. So they were able to get um, acquainted to the sport and they could now participate and represent their own organizations back. So that was an incentive in its own way, and they were able to realize and actually understand and appreciate the sport. So I have tailored programs 
some of them will run right after the African Championship. And I uh, hope that we'll be able to now rope in even more women as we go along. You Thank you. Recently, and uh, people are watching you. And yes. Those women out there, they expect something more yes. than even the media show right here to them Indeed. because they really hope that things are going to change, things are going to be better with you Absolutely. at the helm. So don't let them down. So, and Sami, uh, let's talk about age limits and uh, search for talent. You know, shooting people things, just holding a gun and shooting. You must be talented as well. <laughs> it's something that uh, is also inborn in one way or the other. So how do you search for talents? And is there age limit? Like, if maybe I'm 60, 70, can I still shoot? Uh, yes, Jeff. Um, um, shooting is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a perishable skill. And if, you, if you're shooting for sports, uh, definitely you'll have to keep and maintain your training levels and uh, some level of consistency so that you're able to remain on top of your game. And uh, in different countries, they've got different laws. In the Kenyan laws and in our constitution, is very clear that at the age of 12, um, you can get involved in, in, in shooting sports, where you can go to a shooting range, but of course accompanied by a licensed firearm holder and with your parents. At the age of 14, equally, the constitution is very clear on which calibers you can be able to engage yourself in at those particular ages. Um, in other countries like South Africa, you'd find, or in, the, in, in Europe or in the US, you'd find that at the age of six, seven, eight years old, you'd find that somebody's already engaged in these sports. So you find that they already pick the interest and they start developing that interest and parents do involve them into the field and they're able to grow with it. Um, in Kenya here, you'd find that the people who, or the younger, younger generation who have gotten involved in that particular line are the ones who their parents would either be sports shooters or mm -hmm. are in the police forces, or they've had an exposure to it, or they've been able to see it. And also the idea of PlayStations, people take it for granted, but it's not. It will actually create some interest into the child. Really? Yes. And once the child develops that particular interest, then how do they grow it? Because once they understand that this is what they'd like to do as fun, then you'd find a way of channeling that particular interest into a controlled environment. Because now when they're coming to shoot in reality, they have to start from 0.22, the lower calibers or air pistol. And then from there, they develop that talent and they grow with it and they grow with it. And eventually, they come into the heavier calibers like the 9 millimeter and things like that. So these are talents that can be searched and can be found from giving that kind of exposure, like what you're doing today, bringing us on set and making it possible for us to speak to the country. You'd find that somebody would ask, and immediately when we come from some of your shows, we do get that interested call. Someone says, how would I get my son interested in this? How would I get my sister or my daughter or myself interested in this? And we do welcome them to come to, the, to, to our shooting ranges. Um, where they would come there and you'd find that there is air pistol going on and there is 0.22 going on and you'd find that there is some hidden talent there. When you pick that talent and your nature and grow it, then you find champions, natural champions. And these are the people who we need for the country. Some of us did not start from there. Some of us started when we were already of age at a very far air level. And uh, we have also developed some habits which at times to change is very difficult. And those particular habits makes you hit a ceiling where you can't develop or grow anymore. Yeah. All you can do is nature others to come up. But if we had an opportunity from a younger age, mm -hmm. then we would be champions at a very smaller age. I can give an example of like the Williams sisters. They started at a very young yeah, age. Yeah. And right now they're really winning, winning, and winning, and winning, and winning, and winning. And this is what happens when you're exposed to the right kind of information and the right kind of thing when you're looking for some kind of... All right, just, just, just as we continue, there are, there are cover shoots as well that are showing people shooting in the shooting range. And what happens, by the way, we'll be having this one on live on TV shortly. Yeah. But back to Pauline. Pauline, how do you uh, encourage a mother, a young lady, a sister out there who has always known like these things are just for men? These things are for the military, they are for the police. I'm supposed to have a gun. I'm supposed to own a gun. They have no idea that they have a right to own a gun uh, as because they're registered anyway. Um, I, would, uh, I would actually uh, encourage them to, first of all, understand that this is not an exclusive sport for the military, for the police, or for, the, um, for men. Um, 
One, uh, because uh, we now have, the government has been very supportive. We have many clubs that have opened up in the recent times. We have places that you can actually get in and get uh, trained, like some of our, our sister clubs, like the Kenya Regiment Rifles Club, where you can actually go there, get acquainted with the sport, understand it. You get uh, the safety officers um, at the range, and they're able to expose you and give you that experience. So this is not an exclusivity for the men or the um, discipline forces. It is something that you can actually learn. Even our own uh, ranges back there, mm -hmm. we also get uh, people coming to train. Mm -hmm. People come in to even uh, participate and even view and spectate some of our events. They're able to sort of understand the scope of how far women are coming on board on the spot. So I would really encourage them to get out of that uh, of their comfort zone. Try mm -hmm. something new and just challenge themselves. And a shooting sport is one of those very disciplined and interesting sports that would help them, not just to even uh, get a grasp of it, but also to network with other to people. To network with other yes. people. Sami, there's a program by the Ministry of Sports known as Talanta Hela. It's meant to search for young talents, to identify talents. How far are you or how close are you to that program and probably are you, are you intending to use it to help yourself and to help the National uh, Gun Owners Association of Kenya to at least get new talent because you've, yes, you have new talent, but how far are we with that talent ahead? Uh, Jeff, I'll tell you that even before the ministry um, talked about Talanta, um, the search of the talent and, uh, and the program that they currently have, mm -hmm. which we'd like to congratulate them a lot for that and say mm -hmm. that this is good, good, this is good things for Kenya. Um, we as an association and us as a fraternity is something we've always been encouraging for a long time. Dating back two to three years back, there have been several events that we've been involved in, creating family days and on Sundays trying to see how we can be able to to, to get families to come on board and to have events and to have Sunday's events where we, 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 have, we have activities that involve, involve the youth. We have, we have actually been able to expand and create what is known as regions. And within our regions, we've been able to find good support. Now, when we look at, um, at, at shooting itself and you say that it's only centralized in Nairobi, this does not help us. So we've been trying to see how much we can be able to push this to the, to the regions. We have activities that have been happening in Mombasa. We have activities that have been happening in Mount Kenya. And this is where you go out in search of this particular talent. You don't wait for the talent to come to you. You have to go and search for it. Once you search for it and you find it and identify it, then you see how you're going to nature and support it by bringing it up. The biggest hindrance has always been financial support, you know, definitely. When we look at affordable cost of the kind of resources that we use for the sport, yeah, which is ammunition yeah. and also accessibility to certain types of kinds of firearms. And, and, uh, and this has also been supported heavily by the firearm licensing board that we have. The previous one and the current chairman, the previous chairman and the current chairman who's come on board are people who have been very focused in ensuring that some areas where there was hard stance on control, which now has been clearly indicated that people can work well within those confines. These are areas where they've opened up for us as long as we show that we have a way of controlling them and moving forward with them. And this has helped because if you look at Kisumu now, Kisumu is an area where we never had a lot of uh, involvement. Mm -hmm. We have got fire molders in Kisumu, we've got people who'd love to shoot in Kisumu, but there's no shooting range in Kisumu. Mm -hmm. Now within the regions of the National Gun Owners Association, we've been able to identify a representative in Kisumu who's known as Peter Okul, and Peter Okul is doing some great work in that area of Kisumu. We have people in uh, as far as Mount Kenya, we have people as far as Eldoret, we have other people in other areas like, like Ukambani. You know, over here, um, and, I don't want to and, say and, and clearly, uh, that is good for the sports because if, yes, if we have representatives across the country, yeah. then they can help us. Yes. Now, back to Pauline, yes. the Africa IDP Championships, Open Championships, are here. Ladies, are you ready? Jeff, I can tell you for real that uh, ladies are very well prepared. Uh, we've had a series of trainings that have been ongoing mm -hmm. with his support and uh, our other colleagues as well, tailored uh, trainings. We have um, a lot of other activities that have been running through the time. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, the ladies are very well prepared. As we, we uh, uh, from the current records right now, we have about 80 ladies who have registered for this international shoot. And uh, among them, we have about 12 safety officers trained and qualified who will be able to oversee the running of uh, the, the courses of fire during the competition. Um, by and large, I would say that even where they are right now, ladies are working just beyond the clock, uh, trying to, 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 to even participate in other events. Like we have already um, an ongoing event, mm -hmm. uh, which has just uh, concluded in Rwanda, where we had the police games. And uh, the ladies really shone, because we have one of our lady shooters, uh, Belinda Akot, who took the gold. We also wow, have, that's uh, that mm -hmm. is great. We are actually very proud of that. And we also have uh, Sarah Sintoy, who took silver among other accolades that uh, and major halls of uh, medals that Kenya teams were able to scoop. So even in this one, we really want to make sure that Kenya shines, the ladies at the forefront, and we retain as many, many medals as we can. Uh, Unyango, yeah. we are a week away to the IDPA Championship. They're open for other people from Af outside Africa to come in and, and shoot. How ready is Kenya as we wind up? <laughs> Kenya is ready. We have, we have been waiting for this day and I'm really wondering when is it going to reach because everything is set. We have got our visitors who are coming in from the, out of the country. We've got some visitors coming in from Russia, um, Estonia, from uh, Spain, and we expect them to start streaming in any time. A few of them are coming in from the U.S. One of them is already in the country. Um, the ministry has given us the support that we had requested from them. Uh, we have got teams already on the ground. Our, our, the citizens of the country have already registered to up to 225 participants. Well, the grounds are ongoing, the contractors are on the ground, and they are going on with the construction works that are needed. Um, uh, I think we are, we, are good, we are good to go. Us is just to wait for the actual day. We had a, we, this past weekend, we had a mock exercise. We can call it as a mock exercise, where we had a club shoot, and we had to shoot in the rain just for us to have a feel because this is a blessing that we're going to have a rainy season in case the rain comes on that day how do you go about it and we we, we saw what exactly what needs to be done i can tell you we are ready to go and all you can ask is all kenyans to please come watch participate and uh, spectate this time around we're allowing expect spectators to come on board so karibu thank you so much yes, sami onyango the competition training uh, captain national guns organization as Owners Association of Kenya, mm -hmm. also Pauline Moji, the women representative and the youth representative in the National Gun Owners Association of Kenya. We appreciate that you showed up this morning, and it's a great, great event that we're waiting for, especially the IDP Africa Championship. We wish Kenya is going to, and hope that Kenya is going to retain the title yet again, right? <laughs> I see it's where it's going. So, my name is Jeff Mogiri. Thank you for watching Monday's Sports Chat. We do this again next Monday. Have a good, good day and a week ahead. Please stay safe, even as we continue with Mandamano. Yeah, as the meal,